Breaking TV recap. This is Apples Never Fall. Stay tuned for more from your leading broadcaster of Breaking TV recaps, John Stark. Thanks for tuning in. This is a Breaking TV recap because <laughs> these things just happen. Um, and uh, they happen and Apples Never Fall. So we'll talk about it. Click the subscribe button if you like breaking TV information. It's just uh, as much as you like breaking tennis news. And um, yeah. Um, so this is a new limited series on Peacock. And uh, yeah, I've been doing pilot reviews. So let's talk about this pilot. It has audio description. It's a limited series. It's from the same author who wrote Nine Perfect Strangers, which did fairly well on Hulu. And now they're like, we don't have content. Why don't we make a second season of Nine Perfect Strangers? This is such an easy format. We could just do it again. Because we're lazy. <laughs> so I guess they're making a second season of Nine Perfect Strangers, even though there's no novel to support it. But Apples Never Fall is on Peacock. It's sort of like, remember when, when uh, Gillian Flynn was uh, really popular? And we started with Gone Girl, and then people just started buying up her other novels and making movies out of them? Yep. Eventually, you're going to realize that not all of her novels are created equal. <laughs> um, I don't know if Apples Never Fall is a good book or not, but uh, this series is having some problems. It's, uh, it's got my vote, though, because I'm going to watch it. It's It surpasses, I frequently talk about with TV shows, why I watch them and why I give uh, shows a couple extra episodes. This one's got Annette Bening, uh, Sam Neill, Allison Brie, Jake Lacey. Um, at least the first three are enough to get it to at least four, if not five episodes. And this is only a seven episode run. So unless I just absolutely hate the trajectory of the show, I'll probably just finish it. <laughs> just to be honest, it's probably seven episodes. I don't know. Maybe. Um, it's going to have to be really awful. Uh, there was that series about the girl that got kidnapped or whatever. That, that was terrible with Colin Hanks and... Anna Paquin was in that. Wasn't Jake Lacey in that? That was terrible. I just, I couldn't deal with that. It was, the acting was bad. Here, we've, I think it's directed by the same person who doesn't know how to direct actors. And that betting is going to be like, I'll be damned if I'm directed by a bad director. So she's just doing her own thing. She's, she's fine in this. That's, it's hard to say she's fantastic, but uh, she's about as good as you could possibly hope for her to be in this in this show, um, Sam Neill's fine. I, I don't have a problem. He's also one of those people where it's like, uh, hand me the script and I will make gold. Regardless of the script. And so he's doing, doing his best job with a rather stereotypical role that requires him to be kind of a little slow. I, if I was him on this show, I would, I would constantly hate myself. I'd be like, what did you want me to say? What am I doing? Oh, God. Who am I? Oh, my God. Like, the, the rest of this cast can't act. There's an actress in here. I really don't care. If you're a fan of Wentworth, fine. Debate me in the comments as to her, the merits of this actress. But Georgia Flood is fucking awful. She's a terrible actress. Um, I know she's Australian. She's done a couple things. Uh, not that many. Uh, I noticed she's in Hugo back in the day, but, uh, you know, her role in Hugo was not big enough to be in the top four things that she did on IMDb, so this is not Aza Butterfield. Um, but, yeah, it's, she's, she's terrible in this. Uh, she comes into the story as Savannah. I'm a little ahead of myself. I'm sorry. So we're introduced to uh, Annette and Sam as a loving... Uh, old, ret retiring older couple. He used to be a tennis star uh, and they ran some sort of an academy and she's, you know, sort of the effervescent personality in front of all of it. Um, and we're sort of told 
right up at the beginning of the show that she's missing. There's some ominous scene. She's riding her bike and she seems very happy. And then there's a bike and there's some blood and her four kids are all like, where is she? I don't know. Dad says she's just at the store. Mom never goes this long without calling us. Um, so they're trying to debate. Sadly, Alice and Brie is one of the four. <sighs> anyway. Um, so they openly just word vomit their thoughts uh, so that the audience can be dragged along because I, I think we all got progressively dumber and this show is, is pandering to uh, what it per perceives as being people who cannot follow uh, solid television anymore and they need things that are just right out in front. Anyway, um, so as far as a pilot goes, if you want introducing characters, this actually does it really well. There's a There are a ton of characters here, but there's actually a scene, thank, thanks to Savannah, who I'll get to in a minute, um, where you actually know everyone and why they're here in the show. <sighs> But, um, Annette goes missing, and, uh, the kids are trying to figure it out, and they're like, do we file a missing persons report? And they're like, she's an adult. It takes time. <laughs> you know, this is, I don't know. Um, so, we get to finally, uh, they're at the house, and uh, I gotta tackle this Georgia flood. Uh, and we gotta get to her. So Annette and Sam are at the house, and they're just, I don't know, living life. And all of a sudden at the door, somebody comes up to the door, and it's this woman, and her name is Savannah. She's like, oh, thank God. Thank you for opening the door. I, I just kept running. I have this story of domestic abuse that I'm going to tell you about, but I also have no identification whatsoever. And I'm going to ask really openly prying questions, and for some reason these characters are too stupid to not answer them. Because domestic violence is important, and we must talk about it, and you must believe me. So she gets these, uh, she gets Annette Benning to basically tell her her entire life story without ever... <laughs> ever verifying it. She's like, oh my god. So what are the names of your children and what do they do? <laughs> like, because she keeps doing this thing where she acts like she wants to leave. This girl can't even, like, she's not in character. You know what I'm saying? Like, she feels fake from the moment she walks through the door. She feels like a, like a, like a, oh god. Okay, well this character obviously murdered someone. Uh, she walks through the door and she's like, help me. I'm running from the... It's very just overly dramatic. And like everything she does, she's like, I'm fine. I can go. Is there anyone we can call for you? Do you have any family or friends? Not anymore. Oh, well, then we can't let you go. You just have to... You can stay here. But I don't want to put you out. Are you sure? Oh... It's, like, fucking just obnoxious. I hate this show so much. Anyway, so Savannah finds her way to stay in the house and ask, like, a billion questions that are all intrusive and incredibly personal. And then that Benning's just like, uh-huh, yeah, this is, okay, so he's, we're famous. Um, he's used to be a tennis star. I have four kids. Um, these are their names. This is what they do for a living. Troy, he's a venture capitalist, and he is my rock. And his partner is this. And she just literally just goes through all of her characters. So you're just like, well, I know who all of them are. And who all their partners are. So that way, <laughs> she just breaks it down. in the world, world's weirdest exposition. Because Savannah's just like, oh my god. I can tell you're a good mother. <laughs> From, because she knows who her kids are. And who they're married to. Like, are, man, your standards are low. So anyway, um, yeah, uh, of course Sam Neill rightly protests. He's like, why is she staying in his house? You know, like, and that's like, oh, like I was supposed to turn her away. Yeah, you were like, find her another, what? 
like you, she doesn't want you to call the police. She has no identification whatsoever, and she's asking you a thousand intrusive personal questions. That Sam Neil is rightly um, uh, to be worried in this situation. But Sam Neil sits down in bed. He's like, I don't know if I can sleep tonight. So we get the we get it in the audio description. He sits down on top of the covers because he's not gonna sleep. He sits down on top of the covers. This is the great. This is the greatest moment in television. I'm just gonna get ready for this. If you're still here. I need you to understand this greatest moment in television history, right? Right here. This beats the finale of Cheers. He turns on his television and he catches like the last, I don't know, second of a commercial where it's like, call 500 day competition. No, no. And then it just cuts in. It's like breaking tennis news. <laughs> like. <laughs> Oh my god. Um, please continue. And then it's, it's a story about this guy, it's this who he knows and uh, has done something. And of course, she asks him about it. And he, all he watches is this one news report. That's it. He doesn't leave the TV on. The TV wasn't already on. He turns on the TV to the TV being conveniently breaking tennis news. <laughs> Just like what the fuck you? <laughs> just even if you're on the tennis channel, <laughs> like he still sat down, and there was this like the only thing he watches is a breaking tennis report because this show does not have the time to set up anything else. Where he's, I don't know, he sits down in bed to watch his favorite show, and then like later on in the night, like time passes and she's asleep and. Maybe then the breaking story comes on. No, God, no. He's got to turn on the TV right away so he can get whatever pertinent information he needs to move forward in the series. <sighs> I fucking hate the show. <laughs> I really do. Um, I'm going to end up watching it because it has actors that I like in it, but my God, the writing is terrible. Um, if you like Apples Never Fall, I'm sorry. Uh, and by the way, that the Tevil, that, that Devlin, Tevil title is not... Uh, it's not clever. It's uh, okay. So apples don't fall far from the tree. I get it. It's going to be one of the kids is going to be involved in this somehow. And we're going to find out. Uh, it's going to be uncovered. I'm just going to guess because, uh, I don't know who two of them are, uh, that there's a reason why Alison Brie, who usually stars in her own shows and movies, uh, is, <laughs> is one of the four. Um, if she just continues to be sort of like the background sister, I will be surprised, um, pleasantly, but also sad because she's talented and deserves more than what she's currently being given. But, um, there's something very weird about two of the actors. I don't even know who they are. Uh, then you've got Jake Lacey and then Alison Brie. Well, I think Jake Lacey just played the, I mean, he just played the pedophile, the cat that took the little girl down to Mexico and that, what was that, what was that awful Peacock series called? <laughs> that was so terrible. Anyway, we're back. Uh, Peacock is, I don't know what they're doing with their shows. Um, they have some really good content. Poker Face is, uh, you know, chef's kiss, obviously. Um, but I, what, how do you mess this up? How do you have this talent? involved in this show uh this feels like it's directed by somebody who's never directed television before and has no idea what to do and it's written by people who have never written television before and have no idea what to do like algorithms actually maybe wrote this possibly during the writer strike <laughs> this is they were like the, we, well let's check out and see whether or not chat gpt can write a script what, what should we have it do how about uh see if it'll write an adaptation of apples never fall Let's just see. Uh, should we cast talented actors? No, we just need a couple. And then cast uh, whoever. Whoever shows up. Uh, even this girl, Georgia Flood. I don't know. Um, audio description. I gotta be honest. The audio description is really solid. The narrator is really way too upbeat for a murder mystery. <laughs> or a potential murder mystery. <laughs> like, it's just... It's, she's a, deli a delightful person to listen to and it's it's but it's really changing the tone of the series the show it's hard for me to take the show seriously because it's already shitty 
And then on top of it, I've got a narrator who is ready to narrate, I don't know, like a home and garden show or um, a sitcom, uh, just something that's really upbeat and sort of like, um, like, check out my life. This is great. Everything is perfect and fine. And she goes in the room and look at what she finds. Oh, it's bright and shiny in here. It's a very upbeat. I love it. I love her narration for other things. For this, you need someone who's like, <sighs> she comes to the door. She looks around. She sees nothing. She closes the door. It has to feel more like, you know, like a mystery. Like, a, ooh, what the fuck? What's going to happen? I don't know. Instead of a, okay, so let's go together. Okay, so um, her husband has gray hair and a beard. And it's just like, <laughs> it's great. I think the written narration here is like on fleek. I'm going to use that. We're going to bring it back for this episode. But uh, it's, 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 it's just not. It, she's way too happy for this. She's, I don't know. Uh, it's the she most cheerful potential murder mystery of ever. Because right now we don't know. In episode one, there's like blood on the ground and there's this bike. And we don't know if she's alive or dead at this point. We're sort of like telling the story in a weird way. I don't even know if it's really, like, front to back or back to front or whatever. It's sort of, like, just, uh, we go back a little bit, but not that far back. So it's sort of adjacent to the timeline. Anyway, um, yeah, it, it, it just, that's that would be it. I actually like the narrator's voice. I actually, I'm, I'm not saying I don't want to hear her on things. I just don't want to hear her on this. That's That's it. This was just the wrong call. Somebody did. Somebody looked at this project and was like, apples never fall. Oh my god, is this like that card game? Like apples to apples? Oh, we have to get the right narrator for that. We have to find somebody who's funny. No, that's not what this... This, this has no gravitas to it at all because it's too... The, the show isn't good enough and the narration is really happy. And I can't take it seriously. Um, I don't know what to do with this. This is the second show in a row. I know I just watched Girls on the Bus. If I, I will say that as a pilot, uh, it does everything it needs to do. Uh, it just isn't good. This actually tells you who everybody is, what they do, who the main characters are. It introduces actually a predominantly large amount of characters because you have the parents, you have four kids, they all have a partner. You've got Savannah, um, you've got, a, you've got some detectives that come in and actually does a pretty good job of maintaining a cast above 10 people in a pilot episode. And you have a pretty solid idea of who everybody is and why they're there. And that's really hard to do in one episode, especially nowadays. Uh, I watched The Secret Life of the Walter Boys the entire season. I'm not sure I can name the entire family. <laughs> I'm not even sure I know what their what their purposes are because that show is so imbalanced and I had 10 episodes of that to learn who all of the all of the brothers and the one sister were. Um yeah, it's uh this does it well. So I'll give it I'll give it points for that. But the quality factor is 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 coming in here. I think Annette Benning and Sam Neill are doing a fine job. Allison Bree, it's not that she's doing a bad job, she just doesn't have a lot to do here. Jake Lacey is given sort of a shitty role also. Um, he just can't do much with it. Sort of like he was with uh, the other show. I, I've deleted from my mind. It was I, I watched like three episodes. I'm like, I can't do this anymore. Um, and uh, yeah, he's he's been... I didn't think his acting was good. Was that good, that consistent. So I'm concerned. Anyway... You can watch this, don't watch it. It's up to you. This is just my opinion. Um, but uh, if you like breaking tennis reports, timed perfectly to when you turn on the television, uh, then this is the show for you. If you think that kind of stuff is stupid and it's bad writing, like I do, then maybe this show isn't for you. I'm going to give Apples Never Fall C-. minus. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And uh, I'm going to... Uh, watch more pilots 
and continue to review them so that you can get more information about uh, whether or not you should and should not check these shows out. Because we are in peak TV, I keep being told. And uh, it just means there's a lot of shows and you have choices instead of the when it was just the networks and you had like one of three or four choices. You're like, oh shit, well, I guess I'll read. Anyway, uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I'll see you guys on the other side.